Okay, last part for exercise 60 is some matrix proofs involving inverses. And actually these can be really useful to make some questions become a lot simpler. Um, they, they kind of look complicated, but if you actually understand what's going on, they're not really too tricky. So let's read what this question says and we'll see if we can do this together. It says, if A and B are non-singular matrices such that B, A, B equals I, prove that A is equal to the inverse of B multiplied by the inverse of B. Well, first of all, let's just break down some of this language that we've got here. So they're talking about them being non-singular matrices. If they're non-singular matrices, all that means is that they do have an inverse, which means we're allowed to actually talk about this here. So I'm not too worried about them being non-singular. It just means that the question is actually going to work here. And these questions are always good if they don't give you this. Always start off with a, like a statement being equal to the identity. That's usually going to be a, a really good starting point here. So I'm going to say that B, A, B is equal to I. I'm just going to write down exactly what it is that they've got written. And then let's take a different coloured pen here. What I'm allowed to do is if I want to try and find out what just A is equal to, well, I've got this B on either side of it, and so I want to get rid of those. Now, you can't divide by B on both sides, but what you could do instead is you could multiply this beginning part here by the inverse of B. And I could also multiply this part here by the inverse of B. Now, the reason that I would do this is because B multiplied by, sorry, B inverse multiplied by B is just the identity. So you would have identity AB equals B inverse multiplied by identity. Well, B inverse multiplied by the identity is just B inverse. And actually, I probably didn't really even need to have written this I that I've got here, because effectively, these two things here are just like cancelling out because you just get left with the identity. So I'm probably going to do it at the end of this question, as I might show you how I would write it down for like a formal kind of answer. So we have now that A, B, because that identity doesn't matter, is equal to B inverse. Now I want to get rid of this second B that I've got here. So the way that I get rid of that is by multiplying on the right hand side by B inverse. Now that means I need to multiply by the right hand side on this side as well. Do you notice how here I was doing it on the left hand side of the B, A, B? So I also had to do it on the left hand side of the I. Down here, I did it on the right hand side, so I also have to do it on the right hand side. Now, in this particular question, it wouldn't have made any difference, but in lots of questions, it does make a difference because remember, the order of matrix multiplication does matter. It is non commutative. So you have to be careful that if you're multiplying it at the beginning here, you also need to do it at the beginning here. So that means that the next line of this is just going to be well, the B and the B inverse cancel, so you just get A equals. B inverse, B inverse. And so we've actually done that proof. Maybe if I was going to write this down in the exam, I would probably write that B, A, B equals I. So I would then write down that B inverse, B, A, B equals B inverse I. Then I would write down on the next line, I can just say that they cancel like this. And then I would write down A, B, B inverse equals B inverse B inverse, they cancel, so you just get A equals B inverse, B inverse. So the black part is probably how I would write the proof down here. This was me kind of explaining about how things work. And all I've written in this tip here is that you can get rid of a matrix A at the front of expression by multiplying the front of each side of the equation by A inverse, which gives you I. You can similarly remove an A at the end by multiplying the end of each side by A inverse. So we did the same thing here, but it wasn't with A inverse, it would be inverse. To get rid of this B, I'm multiplied by B inverse at the front, and to get rid of this B, I multiplied by B inverse at the end of the expression. Okay, so let's try a, another proof that we've got here. Um, this time it says, if P and Q are non-singular matrices, prove that the inverse of PQ is equal to the inverse of Q multiplied by the inverse of P. So you might have thought to yourself, okay, well, the inverse of these two matrices is probably just gonna be like this. You might be able to just kind of pull the power out like that. But actually it kind of reverses them. And this is an interesting proof that actually gets used quite a lot. So we wanna try and prove that to do the inverse of two matrices multiplied by that, you have to actually inverse them in a different kind of order. So always for these kinds of things, start off with a really simple form, a uh, simple statement of the form A multiplied by A inverse equals I. So for this one, that simple statement that we would have to begin with would be PQ multiplied by PQ inverse is equal to I. That's our kind of simple statement to begin with. Now what this really means, this means P 
multiplied by q multiplied by p q inverse is equal to i. That's really what this expression is actually saying here. And although I've got brackets around these bits here, you might have remembered a lot earlier on, I said that matrix multiplication was associative. I wonder if I can show you what I mean by associative. Yeah, that um, associative here is what I'm saying, that A times BC is the same as AB times C. So when we kind of apply that to this question, we're actually saying that, let's go a little bit further, this PQ times PQ inverse is the same as P times Q times P inverse. Like it kind of doesn't matter about the um, which bits you do first. So I probably wouldn't write this bracket that I've got here, but I could now say that P inverse multiplied by P Q P Q inverse would therefore have to be equal to P inverse I. Notice how I've multiplied this side by P inverse at the beginning on both sides. So the P inverse and P are going to cancel, which is just going to leave me with Q, P, Q inverse. And the right hand side is just going to be P inverse because it's just multiplying by I, which doesn't change it. Well, you can see what's going to happen here. I'm effectively going to add like a Q inverse at the beginning of both sides like that. But I'm going to just take it a little bit slower and write it on the line underneath. So I'm going to do Q inverse Q multiplied by P Q inverse. Putting it at the beginning would be Q inverse P inverse. These effectively cancel. So I'm just going to write that down and then say that P Q inverse is equal to Q inverse P inverse. So if you're finding the inverse of two matrices that have already been multiplied, to undo that, you do the inverse of Q, then the inverse of P. Just kind of, um, really, it's just, it's this same idea of whack at the beginning on this side, do it at the beginning on this side. If you're doing it at the beginning of this side, you better do it at the beginning of this side as well. Never sort of decide you're going to put it at the other end. It always has to go at the front if you're doing it at the front or at the end if you're doing it at the end. So that should be enough help for exercise 6D now. They kind of mix together all of these things and they have quite a lot of questions that have some of these proofs in and then you get to do some, some work about inverses with two by twos as well. Um, so yeah, let's hope that you do all right in them.